bits of time and in the overwhelming connections of the Squatterman phenomena, we are reflecting our thoughts back on a time that has been misunderstood by modern perceptions. But in the mind of the beholder and in the eye of the observer of the global phenomenon, it is these perceptions that have manifested the very culture that struggles to understand the past. And of course, trauma is reluctant to allow our thoughts to be unchained from the prison of the caged mind, and in this sense, we are still in a recovery. Witnessing something is one thing, documenting it is another. The course of documentation, as opposed to just seeing a fleeting moment in the sky, is key to understanding the course of the auroral manifestation. They looked at these events for so long that they worshipped what was going on. They perceived it as gods in the sky and rather than telling us that they came under attack, instead they tell us they were simply caught in a crossfire of cosmic chaos. The thunderbolts of the gods, the manifestation of plasmatic aurora moving through discrete phases. This event must be the holy order of all things we recognize in the religious record. Our stories and traditions, our understanding, everything relates to the squatter man phenomena. The origin of the idea that there is a mode of perception available to human beings which transcends discursive and analytical thinking are found in Platonic epistemology and are fundamental to Western esoteric traditions. According to Plato, this intuitive intellect has direct apprehensions of spiritual or noetic reality, which the rational mind can then process, interpret, and analyze. In fact, the rational mind simply cannot grasp the totality of such cosmic insight, and if it tries to do so, will inevitably reduce its own parameters of vision, often with a lofty disparagement of its validity often eliminating things that are unfamiliar, unexperienced, or goes against their own beliefs. Why is the power of the imagination to recognize, to know, non-physical beings so disregarded in our culture? The answer lies deep in the roots of the enlightenment division of religion and science, where all that cannot be known through empirical observation or logical deduction is relegated to either superstition or supernature. The faith of spiritual sensibility being set in opposition to the certainty of human reason. However, prehistoric people did see these manifestations and their perceptions are glorious. Where we can identify it, we will bring it. It's up to the viewers of this channel what to do with it thereafter. The perception, for example, of the winged god Kronos stroking the hair of a goddess at the broken column is one of these manifestations. They tried to understand the sky event. The broken column represents the break. Cronus was to the Greeks what Saturn is to us today, and in their minds, the god Saturn was playing with the goddess's hair, her hair being the beginning of the auroral bombardment as it was seen in the sky as viewed from the Earth. Now, what if we were to tell you that we believe this goddess to be the planet Venus? What if we were to tell you that Cronus stroking the hair of the goddess was in fact planet Saturn exchanging plasma with the planet Venus? What if we were to tell you that the original marriage between a god and goddess was this event? Plasma going between the planets. Known as the Hyros Gamos, it's the sacred marriage between the two. This event plays out. Today it symbolizes union and bond, but the meaning was lost as it assimilated into the tradition. It became known as unity of the two, but in the ancient assembly. It was Kronos who first began a plasmatic outburst, radiating intense synchrotron radiation across the whole solar system, before affecting the Earthlings. The unfaithful goddess Venus, whose hair would reach all the way to the planet Mars, completing the connection between the Earth, Saturn, Venus, and Mars, and perhaps inspiring the story of Aphrodite. The ancient stories of the goddess tend to reflect her role in love between the gods. Aphrodite also had a darker side and revenge was one of her less attractive features. Aphrodite was Venus in ancient myth and inspired great works of art and literature since the goddess first enthralled mortal minds in the observable field of view. 
The earliest of assimilated stories reaches the modern mind from the ancient mind of Hesiod, who explains the creation of the goddess. In the order of the two stories of Aphrodite's birth, she emerges from the sea a grown woman. Her father is Uranus, the god of the sky, and she has no mother. This story takes place two generations before Zeus, when Uranus reigned with his wife Gaia, the goddess of the earth. Uranus hated his children and hid them in the depths of the earth until Gaia, loathing her husband, devised a plan with her son Kronos. She equipped her son with a sickle and when Uranus next came to sleep with Gaia, Kronos chopped off his genitals. The severed parts fell into the ocean and sea foam enveloped them. From this foam emerged the goddess Aphrodite and this was observed from the earth. Aphrodite's name comes from the Greek word aphros, meaning foam, which could refer to the perceived plasma. In his story, Hesiod has Aphrodite's float past Cytherea and emerge at Cyprus. In ancient Greece, both of these cities had huge cults to Aphrodite. In fact, the temple of Aphrodite at Cyprus is as old as the 12th century BC, long before Hesiod lived. Just as he used a Greek word to explain the mystery of Aphrodite's name, he see it here uses geographical details to explain why she was worshipped in these two cities. Although these myths surrounding Aphrodite are Greek, Aphrodite is not a Greek creation but more of an acquisition. She is a version of the goddess Ashtar, also called Astarte, Ishtar, Isis, and a number of other variants when she appears in different places around the Mediterranean and throughout the Middle East. As a goddess, Astarte held dominion not only over love, but also heaven and war. Aphrodite's function was narrowed down to the goddess of love, although she is occasionally depicted with weapons or married to Ares, the Greek god of war, the planet Mars. In ancient Mesopotamia, the goddess was called in Anna. It is said that Aphrodite was so beautiful that the other gods would fight for her affections. This was the manifestation as they saw it in the sky. It was the outburst of planet Saturn radiating plasmic aurora that would eventually generate the Taurus field. The Squatter Man. But what do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below and as always, thank you for watching.